or make sure you follow the YouTube for the VODs that are coming out immediately after the set is done, and the link is posted on their Twitter. Speaking of links that are going to be posted, we're going to have this link up on the House of 3000 Twitter, which is how John Numbers and Zane playing for that final winner side top eight squad. Yeah, and um, this is going to be interesting. And this is another case where John probably shouldn't be hanging around at the ledge that much. We're going to see it anyway. Yeah. And um, <laughs> it's going to, it's, no, seriously, it's, it's going to be a game of uh, how well can John navigate around this, uh, this traps that Zane's, Zane's setting up. And what trick is he willing to take? <laughs> and um, we're gonna see. Not, mm, maybe not that one. <laughs> that's why you should want to really be hanging around the ledge. But you know, John's been doing this for a year, so you know he's used to this. Yeah, he kind of is almost expecting himself to be playing with fire mm -hmm. for those few invincibility frames that he get. And we, I mean, we it's already racked up 113. John has already put up a fair bit of damage. Now yeah. all he needs is to find one up air on an overzealous ledge trap from Zane, and that could do it. And as, if Zane's gonna give him this entire triangle of the stage, this corner, he's gifting it to John. Then that's some free neutral getups and uh, ways to go back to ledge if he feels the need to, mm -hmm. like now apparently. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm I'm liking how Zane's been using the gunman. He's he's almost been using the gunman as a meat shield when he's uh, when he's using the can and uh, the clay pigeon as, you know, punish options. And, you know, just eating a lot of these with the suns. And he's throwing out that first every time John's at the ledge and he sees him start charging up. And that's actually a great way to keep your resources available to you because, you know, usually salute the suns just smokes things. And, uh, yeah, no, it's very smart by Zane. Yeah, John can't, uh, can't even seem to find stocks or, or heal himself up the 2% at a time in order to compensate for the... Uh, for the coverage that Zane is showing off. Zane looking very, very solid in all of his sets today. Be uh, all of their sets today, excuse me. Because they uh, have just, they've mastered, or at least are on point with their punish game. The Clay Pigeon follow-ups have been immaculate. And here, where John is going to slow down the, play the pace a little bit, they're accepting that as just the bargain that comes with this game, the game that John wants to play, and are playing it better than he is. Yeah, and it, it's it's just been a struggle for John. Um, John actually, you know, a couple of trades just now got Zane to 63 percent, and that was good, good by John. But uh, there, like, John has to take an early stock at this point because at this rate, um, he's gonna get outpaced. Yeah, and it's it's losing. He's losing a lot to just not necessarily kill moves, but the little disruptions that can come from gunmen, that can come from can. Can's not gonna kill you until around these percents, around 170, 180, and even still, maybe even later if he places himself right. But that was a hell of a placed up air from underneath the stage. The duck poking its bill and finding the finding the stock on John, getting keeping Zane in the lead. Yeah, but John, yeah, so John has limit right now, and um, doesn't matter. And this is what I'm talking about. This is why Zane is so smart. They're, they're, they're putting the gunman. So, so they just tried to put the gunman there again when John was charging up, and it's just eating up all of all the projectiles from the ledge that John's throwing out. And Zane just yeah. doesn't care. Yeah. Zane just like you can keep doing that. I'm gonna keep throwing out gunman. I'm gonna keep throwing out can because um, it doesn't matter. But John taking that stock. Only at 40%. Actually, you know, you know, John's been, you know, hanging in there, and you know, he, he's in a very good position still. Yeah, he's he's showing off like his experience at this point. Like he knows that yeah, there's often a lot of counterplay and direct counterplay to how WeFit wants to do things. Like don't interact with them at ledge. Like try and uh, outpace them, make them feel, um, m make them stay in the corner and feel like corner pressure instead of just their home. Don't let, don't play Wii Fit's game, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And Zane hadn't been doing that for a while, but the deep breathing is still such a house. Look at so much damage popping up from basically nothing. The stuff that's very low committal from John's part. And I can bet that Zane might be feeling the pressure because they're retreating back to that game plan where they would throw out to the, the gunman on reaction to any of the, uh, the volleyball or sun salutation uh, that they see. But 
they're coming in a little bit more. They're reacting to John's approaches a little bit like harder and a little bit more fierce, like just kind of tw twitchy, I think is the word. As the game gets later and later and clock ticks away second by second. Like, you know, you know, actually we've been seeing like that John's been getting way more aggressive. I don't think this whole stock John has gone to the ledge. And I think John understand has been understanding what you know the whole the whole gunman thing and John's kinda catching on and trying to read a roll in by, by Zane at this point and just trying to catch Zane slipping. And um, yeah, now it actually seems like John's in control. Just kinda almost hunting down Zane to try to get the stock. Yeah, as long as he sees the gunman on screen, John is preparing himself for uh, for his offense to start then. But he needs Zane to throw out the gunman first, so it's not going to be the body blocker. And the gunman yeah. was the gunman had just faded, mm -hmm. so there came the sun salutation. Yeah, and you know, we, and we talk we talk about Zane's game plan, and we also need to talk about John's adaptation. I, I want to say midway through that second stock, I think John had a revelation. And he was kind of just like, okay, whatever is happening, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gaining any, I'm not gaining any headway with this. I need to go in, and that's something that you know people kind of criticize John for sometimes. But that was an instance where John actually played very aggressive, and very in, in so much in the opponent's face that um, forced him to do things. But now we're seeing the Sephiroth. Yeah, Zane had been, uh, they've been showing off of this counter pick for a little bit. Uh, they pull it out in some interesting matchups that they feel like Duck Hunt is just going to take too long to find stocks and or not have enough raw kill potential and force him, forcing them to find like, some more cheeky setups. Mm -hmm. You're not, th you're not uh, surrendering ledge pressure when going to Sephiroth, but you have a little bit better of an on-stage platform-to-platform game which might be important for how John approached the Duck Hunt game plan, which was by hanging around behind this platform and going for surprising burst options that would take center and surpass center. Sephiroth has the speed to deal with that and the disjoint as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, definitely does have, have the speed and disjoint. And if John's going to play that, you know, like you're saying, if John's going to play his ledge game, Sephiroth does have that distance um, in, his, in his sleeve. And... Um, yeah, and we're gonna see. Like, this is this is the first time is gonna be very important. You know, as usual when you fight against John, but I feel like especially a Sephiroth, things could kind of snowball pretty quick considering that Sephiroth is pretty light, and um, a character like We Fit who has a uh, deep breathing limit mechanic, I feel like you kind of have to get the lead at that point. You know? Yeah, and Zane's still living that sunset. The ball from downtown. Hello? From down no, not again. Oh, the, okay, okay, okay. So John, John tried to hit him again with the dash attack with, with the ball, and I, I would have, I would have screeched. I would have screeched. That's cognizance. I mean, we all have seen the, uh, the clip as uh, the sun citation takes the stock of Sinji getting the lead and John healing for two percent in order to uh, maintain his percent lead in the timeout. That's a level of cognizance that John just kind of has, like his awareness of all of the aspects in the game, instead of just trying to limit the mentality of just what matters and what doesn't. Mm. And we think will definitely reward that because deep breathing is just so ridiculous sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, not even sometimes, all of the time. <laughs> yeah, and, and you want to talk about awareness, you know, that counter by Zane was uh, pretty wild. Uh, but at this point, they're down by a lot, but slowly bringing this back. And Sephiroth's going to get the wing. Oh, Sephiroth, excuse me, Sephiroth has the wing. So they're in a good position, but oof, no more way. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily for this stock, if they are trying to really mount this comeback, John. they will find their wing a little earlier. That was a crazy <laughs> commitment by John. Just straight across the stage. From deep. <laughs> From the depth of the yoga mat. And wow. And yeah, John definitely went for that. And that's something you can do against Sephiroth. Uh, you can't go deep against Sephiroth while they're charging their up B. They're actually pretty vulnerable when you do that. It's like almost no risk at all. It's not box fire where you might get clipped by the fire or something weird like that. There's very much little risk when you go out there against Sephiroth. Yeah, but now uh, Zane has their wing on deck. A couple forward airs. They've been really committing hard to this down air as a means of punishing John going to ledge, which normally is like a very good tool, but John just looks so comfortable mixing up when uh, they grab ledge that Zane 
that F tilt's gonna do, that pivot cancel F tilt, finding the sweet spot will absolutely take the stock. But you have to wonder if they need to shake up how they're punishing John. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. John knows. John knows you can go out and punish that up B like pretty pretty handily. And um one thing that John needs to be careful of, because if John does the wrong thing at ledge, like a salute the sun at ledge and Zane counters it, that's the stock. Like I, it actually doesn't matter what percent John is at. If John does that and he gets countered, that's a hundred percent the stock. So John needs to watch out. Yeah, Z and Zane knows. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but finding the up air, yeah, Zane their win condition flat out was get deep breathing, have them get deep breathing and let me counter something and blow them up. Even if it doesn't kill, it will take them from like 30 to 70 or something. Mm -hmm. It will double their percent, put a lot of pressure on John. Yeah. But finding the jump uh, with finding the jump with that up air just solid stuff from it's solid stuff and solid fundamental play from John after a very sharp adaptation on his part. Mhm. Mm